ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is National Tesla in the Gong. I'm sitting inside a very interesting EV. We've seen a fair few here in Darling Harbour at the fully charged live show. But this one is the Kia EV6. And this is the only Kia EV6 that is in attendance here in Darling Harbour, Sydney in the fully charged live show. Without further ado, we're going to have a chat with the owner of this vehicle, Simon Hicks. And we're going to ask him questions about the car and also do a quick run around of the car and do a little bit of some interior tour of the car as well. Let's do this. Hi there, mate. Good day, good day. How are you, Nash? Not too bad, mate. Thank you very much for letting us have a quick tour of your lovely, lovely EV6. Oh, it's a pleasure. Rightio. So now, first things first, do you like the car? That is the million dollar question <laughs> if there really has. Love the car. I had it for a year now. I've done about uh, 33,000 kilometers on it. Um, and it's a beautiful touring car, which That's I- Awesome, mate. Yeah. And what is your daily commute like? Well, um, I, I, do a, I do a big commute um, from Tannerfield to Musselbrook every two weeks, okay. uh, which is a thousand kilometer round trip mm -hmm. um, to my job down there. And for the rest of the time, we use it for local driving around Tannerfield and the odd trip to Brisbane and down to the coast. So probably I'm unusual amongst a lot of EV owners in that most of my driving is highway driving long distance driving at speed and very little city cycle stuff. So That's awesome, mate. And uh, everybody has this question with regards to non-Tesla EVs. How are you finding the charging infrastructure? The charging infrastructure has been challenging. Uh, I won't deny that. I, I, when I go on long distance driving to work, I always leave 90% charged and do a top up down on the way at the NRMA charges at usually Armadale or Tamworth. Mm -hmm. um, NRMA has had some challenges for those charges, although they have upgraded them. True. Um, I think the challenge for the future is will will be that there's a lot more EVs on the highway, and uh -huh. that's going to utilise the resources on those charges. We do have access to the Tesla supercharger in Tamworth now, which is a good backstop. That's awesome. Um, but overall, I, I, you, I've had the occasional challenge. But I've never been stranded and I've always been able, most of the time I've been able to charge when I needed to. That's awesome, mate. That's awesome. And what is the range of this vehicle and what, do you know what the kilowatt hour on this battery is? So the, the real world range for me, using a lot of highway driving, is about 440 k's. That's good. A little bit less in the winter. Uh -huh. um, so that's, that's very ample for what I need to do. Um, it's a 78 kilowatt battery. Mm -hmm. um, and um, a lot of the fast chargers that we have access to in the bush are 50 kilowatt chargers. Uh -huh. So you're doing a little bit of a top up on your way and doing most of your charging at either end. That's great. Um, I have taken it to the 350 kilowatt EV chargers on the Gold Coast and in Brisbane and Toowoomba. Uh -huh. And you're certainly getting your 240 kilowatts maximum amount of those ones. That's great. Um, and, you know, which gives you your advertised 18 minute charge. And quite honestly, I've had to move the car before I've finished my coffee and breakfast. So. That is true, isn't it? Yeah. Most people seem to think that we need a thousand kilometer car. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense to have an EV. But yeah. that's not the case here. No, and very much so. Like with Nash, when I'm, when I'm driving to work, I have to stop on the way anyway for a break, for something to eat. And I usually end up having to go shopping in town with Armadale anyway. And often when I get back to the car, it's actually charged up more than I was... Um, needing to to get to the other end so it's really not an imposition for long distance driving that is true if mate. you know what you're doing and you're used to once you become used to the car this range anxiety is not an issue that is true isn't it we do yeah. have this conversation with our friends and we say you probably make that one odd mistake when you forgot to charge or something of that sort then you remember and yeah. and that becomes like muscle memory after over a period of time yeah initially you've you've got to think about it you you need to you still need to use the apps plug share and better route planner are your friends mm -hmm. um it gives you particularly in the bush when you've got limited options gives you particularly knowledge of which charges are available and which are not um, but once you you get used to that process it's second nature really is that's awesome, mate. Yeah. Uh, we just want to do a quick internal tour of your car as well. But congratulations on owning an EV for an over a year and uh, also uh, doing really well in the bush. Yeah, no, it's, um, it's been a pleasure. And it's, it's, a, it's actually a beautiful car to drive. Uh, you know, at the end of it, I get out feeling 
you know, refreshed and um, it sounds like an advert, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of the choices I made to, to choose this car um, because it has, it's been tuned to Australian conditions. It has great suspension, it's better, great ride quality. And of course, along, along as well, with common with other EVs, um, it's great road holding because of the low center of gravity. Absolutely, mate. Well said, well said. Now let's go into the interior tour. Yep, so you've got your, your full display here. Um, right in front of you, you've got your standard um, speed range available. Um, all the things that you need to, to look at. You, you, um, I'll show you, uh, as we're not driving, some of the stuff isn't available, obviously, you're looking at. But it'll give you tyre pressures, give you what your um, uh, usage has been. Um, and over here, you've got your touch screen. So we can look at the different things that are uh, available how you set, how you're going to charge as you go along. Um, you can also look at energy consumption here and what you're using as you're driving along, how much is being used by battery care, how much is being used by the air conditioning and so on and so forth. Um, it's a very responsive touchscreen, I must say. It's yeah, really it's, good. It's, it's really good. It's um, Apple CarPlay uh, is available once plugged in through the USB so you can have all your, um, your mapping and, and you, there's, there's native um, navigation available as well mm -hmm. um, but I use Apple CarPlay like I'm sure most people would as well and that's all very full screen that's uh, awesome available. down here you've got your climate control um, and with a the touch there you can then go onto media radio oh lovely um, I, I really thought this was a capacitative button but this looks like it's yeah, a touch screen by itself it's a touch screen so you've got um, your different choices on that uh, all in the one screen um, on the front here you've got your heated steering wheel and you've got your heated seats and also your ventilated seat controls um, just here is your forward and reverse so you know driving driving selector there um, and um, here you've got your reverse park camera which comes up on here oh, and that's a 360 uh, degree camera yeah, as well so that's you 360 cool. degrees so if they got the color of the car right it would be better back you can spin <laughs> around and see who's walking about uh, your car, which is pretty handy. It is. If at home, if you're backing up and the dogs walk behind you, at least you can see where they're going. So. Most certainly, and, and I'm yeah. really impressed that the screen is super, super responsive. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. Oh, that's really nice. No, uh, that's a, that's available in the GT line version. Um, yeah, and it's 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 actually good, quite a good little toy. So. Yeah. And obviously, most of the time when you're backing up, that's what you're going to see. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and the standard controls. Uh, that you'd get windows and door locking and um, opening the back and the, the charge port. That's and awesome, mate. And how do you find the, the drive comfort? Uh, is the positioning okay? Is the, is the height of the seats adjustable and is it pretty good, you yeah, think? Yeah, so it's all electric adjusting on the seats. Um, you've got your um, set positions, which you can set if you've got two drivers. You can set profiles up to do that as well. So if I want to re return to the position I had to start with. So when you open the door, it actually, and you turn the car off, it'll actually slide the seat backwards, um, so you can so easy access. Driver exist, yeah, driver exit, right, easy yeah, access. That's, that's right. That's yeah. awesome. And you've got your your standard, um, which you expect in a high high end car these days, adaptive cruise control. Mm -hmm. So the radar radar sits in the front, and you can set your distances for that, which is pretty standard. That's good, pretty cool. Fairly good lane assist. It does tend to wander sometimes, mm -hmm. um, but you know it's 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 pretty well fine. That's uh, awesome, man. And this one does have a sunroof as well, eh? Yep. So we've got the sunroof up here. For those of us that you know, I, I probably rarely use the sunroof. Uh -huh. um, but, you know, that's, again, there's an option available on the GT line. Um, most, probably, I'd, I'd keep the sunroof closed, okay. but I'd keep the visor keep open, the visor open oh, particularly nice. in the winter, and then you can see out. But in the summer, when you're trying to, you know, keep the sun out of the cabin, you keep the visor closed. Super duper, mate. We do need that, isn't it? Okay, now let's do a quick external tour of the car, if that's okay with you. Yeah, no worries. All right, mate, let's do this. Yep. So it's a standard, like in a, in a standard ice car front. So this is the all-wheel drive version. So it also has a motor in the front. So we have a fairly limited space in here for storage. So you've got, I'm keeping my time at the ability kit in here. And I've uh -huh. also got my jump 
my jumper here, 12 volt battery. Oh, just which in is case. Something we just have to be aware of. I yep. haven't had problems in this car, but I'd certainly recommend carrying these ones around with you. That's so, true. You're not, you're not getting as much room in this as you will in the Tesla uh -huh. and some other cars. They uh -huh. could probably improve the organisation of space in that. I suppose in, so. In the rear-wheel drive version, though, you do get a big, bigger front, front. space. Okay, a front wheel. trunk, yeah. yeah. Now, uh, everybody has this question. We call, we call the, the, uh, um, the trunk as trunk here in Australia. Should we call this as frunk or should we call it the fruit? I think the, the fruit. fruit. The fruit is the better word. I think we should be word. calling it the fruit. Yeah. Yes, the fruit it is. <laughs> fruit it is. So that is the, the front camera here. Hey. Yeah. The front camera is here. Yeah, and this is the radar sitting the in here. Right well, down yeah. there. Oh. And these these grills will open, and this provides air ventilation through to the battery, um, as well as it's got a obviously a, a fluid called ventilation system or cooling system for the battery as well as required. That's awesome, mate. Yeah. Let's look at the side profile of the car and look at the door handles as well. So in the unlock position, the door handles pop out and it's just a matter of opening and closing like that. When, nice. the, cars, when the car's in drive and locked, they pop in as, a, as do the mirrors. Um, That's super sweet. Yeah. And so they do sort of a self-presenting yes. door handles self sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. You can set the mode so that if you approach with the key, um, uh -huh. the, the car will automatically present the doors. Um, nice, but you as you walk. you can also set the mode that it doesn't happen. So I Even haven't better. set, because if I'm walking out of the garage all the time, I don't want the car opening the door. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. And the unusual uh, charging position, I really like the way yeah. they, have, they have incorporated the charging doors there. That yeah. is really, really cool. I really like this particular thing. Yeah. Uh, so, the CCS2 and the Type 2 chargers. Yeah, eh? which sits under the flap there. Yeah. Perfect. So. And it's just the one charger, isn't it? Just at the rear. Yeah, just the one charger at the rear. And of course, we also have vehicles allowed uh -huh. um, on this car, which is which can be pretty handy. We used it in a power outage yeah. recently at home. And the vehicle loader adapter just pops on there. Um, just click down to the plug and the plug's in there. Look at that. Yeah. So that's a standard 10 amp plug, isn't it? Yeah, so a standard 10 amp plug and it'll run 3.2 kilowatts of load from this car. More people have yeah. to bring some VTT of these vehicle to load uh, <laughs> to the air car. This is super cool. Yeah. This is really cool. And is this an add-on uh, accessory or does it come standard with uh, the car? It comes standard on the GT line. I think I think for the entry level model you you can buy buy this adapter. Oh sweet um, ass, sweet ass, mate. That's so awesome. It's been pretty handy in mm -hmm. the power outage we had recently. And so. this is a uh, this is a 6040 uh, split, isn't yeah, it? Is so it's a 60, hatchback. Yeah, so 6040 split. Uh -huh. And the seats are also variable in about four positions to even to, better. Yeah, even better. If you if you need to sit back. So there's there's lots of um, lots of um, leg room in the seat. Uh huh. Um, oh, that's really cool, mate. That is your standard driving position, isn't it? Yeah. So I, I can, now at the moment the seat's actually pulled forward. I think so. Um, okay. So yes, yeah, so you get a little bit more room. Once you sit in it and turn the car on, the seat will move forward. That's so even so better. You get more right, yo, I see, I see what you mean. Even with that, it's yeah. a handsome, handsome space you got back there. Yeah. I've probably one thing to be aware of, if you're a taller person sitting at the back with longer legs, mm -hmm. you'll probably find your legs are a little bit lifted off the seat, ah. which is pretty standard for electric cars with the battery in the battery floor. Because the, the floor height is a bit high. The skateboard yeah, design, that's, that's true. true. So it's, it's great for kids, probably less so for tall people with long legs. <laughs> fair, yeah. enough, fair enough. Let's close the rear, man. I want to see the. I want people to see the uh, rear end of the car and how cool it is. So that is the rear profile of the car, guys. Sweet looking one. And this is the GT add-on, isn't it? The um, the spoilers and stuff. Oh, the sp I think the spoiler comes standard with all of the all of the cars. Okay. One thing it doesn't have is a rear wiper. Ah, okay. Which was a concern to me early on because I live in a bush area and uh -huh. we do have a fair bit of dust on some of the roads, but it's not been a problem at all. The spoiler actually directs the the airflow down, so Even it actually better. keeps the back window really good. Oh, really that's clean. awesome, mate. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you very much for letting us do a quick. Uh, you know, inside, outside, and also talking to us uh, with regards to the car. So if um, I were to recommend to uh, one of our 
uh, viewers, I'll definitely ask them to watch this so that they can know, know more about this car. No, no worries. It's been a pleasure. Awesome, mate. And if you can do it in the bush, you can do it anywhere in the world. That's right. Yes, That's so true. true. Yeah. Okay, let's do a quick walk around, guys. This is awesome. Thank you very much, mate. Thank you.